If you thought this was a dump, then you definitely don't want to take a look at my trousers literally right now. Sometimes to be your best, you've got to make a mess. Wow, as discussed in our video yesterday, Bitcoin dropped down to our exact target. I personally wouldn't be surprised if we had maybe one more pullback down to that $46,000, $47,000 area over the next uh, 24, 48 hours, and then even getting another attempt. Uh, okay, I think that's very, very likely, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, as long as we hold above 45 at the very lowest, 45,000 US dollars, then this pattern is intact and we have the ability in the short term to actually initiate another breakout move for Bitcoin. And the question now is, are we heading higher or are we in store for another one, two skidoo? In this webisode, we're gonna be going over some exact targets for you to watch in the short term. So pour yourself some milk and splash it all over your belly. Let's do this. Welcome back everyone, I'm your host Andy Applesauce and I'm here to fill your mind with knowledge, your piggy bank with crypto, and your belly with baloney. Wow, we have a lot to be going over today in regards to Bitcoin's price and we're going to be taking a look at some of these altcoins as well as in fact this is one of the first days where altcoin gainage is still quite nice in the last 24 hours but there has been a slight decrease in not only the percent gains but also the amount of some of these top coins that are getting some nice gainers. So guys, if you absolutely love gainers, make sure to hit that like, make sure to subscribe. And if the thought of a thick piggy bank with nice cheeks excites you guys, make sure to turn on those post notifications as well so you get updated when we post these time-sensitive critical alerts immediately. Splish splash, let's make some cash. Massive mommy alert. Guys, so we got our weekly candle to open late last night. And in fact, so far our weekly candle is just basically one absolutely massive wick. Uh, because we had that nice, decent, very, very small, if you ask me, little dip last night. Uh, let's even just take a look. What was it? Maybe like, you know, 5 6% for Bitcoin. I think the reason people were panicking across the board, because I could not quite wrap my head around why everybody was panicking, but I was getting, for the first time in a long time, a bunch of messages, comments, uh, even people that I know in real life messaging me just wondering why things were dipping. And as you can see, Bitcoin really barely did anything. It didn't really go that far. Uh, but some of these altcoins, I think, is what scared people a little bit because some of the alts were down, you know, like 15, 20, 25 percent. And that's illustrated nicely here on the entire altcoin market cap. You can see uh, right now we're at about 560 billion dollars for the entire alt cap. But we did dip all the way down to about a little under 500 billion. So even taking a look at this, it really is not too drastic, but I think mainly because there's so many new people in the space and because they haven't really seen a dip in a few weeks or so, I think a lot of people were panicking about this. However, if we fast forward to now, you know, talking about last night and then you fast forward to now, basically all of those dips are now recovered, right? If we, let's go to XTZ, see a very big, very big drop here from about $5 to all the way down to a little under $4. And currently it's now back to about four and a half dollars. Chainlink, same thing. You can see this entire thing was basically uh, bounced back up. It wicked all the way down to about $27, which keep in mind was like the all time high like three or four days ago. So a week ago, we had never even uh, been this high. And uh, yeah, we had a little bit of a dip. So I think it's always important to keep in mind where we are. Uh, some of these altcoins are very nicely up, Chainlink being one of them. Uh, what do we have? Ethereum dipped from about 18 all the way down to like 1650. So guys, realistically, uh, to be honest, there was no point at last night where there was actually any reason to panic. Even at the very, very lowest of the dip last night, it was still barely anything. So before we really dump into the Bitcoin TA and, and look at some more TA here, guys, we really have to factor, we just have to remember one thing. The 21 week moving average for Bitcoin is right here about 25,000 US dollars. Okay, now I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to 25,000 US dollars, but if you're in this market and you're not at least accepting of the fact that there could be a pullback down to even somewhere close to this level over the next few weeks at any point, if you're not at least aware that at any point uh, Bitcoin cryptocurrency could have a nice dip it, at the very lowest down to some of these levels, then these price swings will stress you out. But if you understand where we are and how high we are and how bullish this market is, then you really should not be getting stressed at all with what happened last night. It was really, uh, in the in the broader picture of things, it was absolutely a very, very small move. I honestly wouldn't even have thought anything of it if I didn't receive just so many comments of people asking why we're dropping. In fact, I thought I was living in a different universe because I was getting all these comments, people saying, oh no, why are we dropping, why are we dropping? And I looked at the chart and I was just wondering like, I was just wondering like, is my chart not loading or like, why is everyone panicking? So again, I'm still not 100% sure why people were panicking about such a small move, but um, honestly, it'll help you out a lot if you prepare for much bigger downside moves. Now, again, I'm not saying they're gonna happen, 
But um, if last night stressed you out, which it shouldn't have, if last night stressed you out, then you need to be prepared for the for the idea that we could drop way, way lower than we dropped last night. And it would still be perfectly fine and still be perfectly healthy for the current movement of the market and for the current trajectory of the altcoin space specifically. And guys, with that being said, you can see on our intro, we talked about just a revisit to the bottom of this triangle. I actually extended it out uh, earlier today as well because now we have multiple touches on the bottom here and we still have this resistance still exactly right around 48,500, which is exactly where we're trading right now. So to me, this, this triangle is even more validated than it was yesterday when I talked about it because we got another drop down here, down all the way to about, again, 45,500 is where we went. And in yesterday's video, I said I would be uh, totally fine with this pattern being still completely perfect if we still went all the way down to 45,000, which we didn't even quite get that low, but that's exactly what happened. Uh, ultimately, this pattern, I think, is still gonna play out over the next uh, two or three days. I think it's a little too early to know exactly which direction it's gonna be breaking out, but one of the main things too, if we go to this hourly chart for Bitcoin, all that happened, guys, is this, and this is something we've been talking about for, I mean, like our last four or five updates, just trading within this key Fibonacci range. After we fell below this key Fib level, about 48,500, which is the 1.414 here on the one hour chart, after we fell below it, we literally just went to the next Fib level. So again, uh, I, I'm just shocked that so many people were panicking. We just literally went to the next level here. Also very bullish because we immediately just bounced back up and we reclaimed that FIB level where we're trading right now. Currently, we're kind of just trying to hold above the 21 and 50 moving averages on this in this one hour chart. And same thing here on the four hour chart. Basically, all that happened is we broke below the 21 moving average on this four hour chart and came down to our next uh, moving average on this four hour chart, the 50 right here. We almost got down to it, but again, you see came down to our key FIB level, which again, guys, I literally haven't touched these FIB channels since, I think I put these FIB targets on here like uh, four or five weeks ago, and I've just been letting them sit and see how Bitcoin price plays out at these FIB levels. And so far, they literally just react perfectly at these levels. So just keeping an eye on basic trend lines, multiple different time frames, uh, Fibonacci levels, and different moving averages, I think gives you a really good idea of where to expect support. And um, if it does come down to some of these levels, like we saw yesterday, and it bounces at those levels, then again, there's literally zero room for panic. Um, and I think that'll just make people feel a little bit better about their investments if they just have, you know, multiple time frames and multiple charts pulled up with different TA on it. And guys, nothing really new here. You know, if we actually do get a bullish break here and play out over the next, you know, 48, 72 hours for Bitcoin, I personally think we are going to go up to about 40, uh, 54 to 55,000 US dollars. I think that if we do get a break here, if we finally do break 48.50 and we're actually able to break 50,000 because we had one little test here, very, very short lived, um, just about a day ago. And after that rejection, that is when we swung to the other side of this. But if we're able to actually slowly creep up here, and if we actually get confirmations, uh, maybe even come all the way up to 50K, get another rejection, but then hold support at 50, 48, 50, 48,500, and let's say do actually get a confirmed breakout, I personally think that 54 to 55,000 is gonna be a very, very nice short-term target for Bitcoin. So again, if we breach 50K, I think we're gonna shoot a couple thousand dollars above 50K. And as well, in the short term, in terms of an actual pullback, okay, so say we don't get that breakout. Let's say momentum actually drives us down over the next week. What level should you be scared of if we start breaking? So honestly, for me, uh, holding anywhere above 41,000 to 40,000, so about a thousand dollar range, just holding this line here, also kind of just exactly where this 21 day moving average here, slightly below it, basically just holding 40,000 is 100% normal. And if people were panicking, which they were last night about that drop, then you know for a fact, there are gonna be a lot of people panicking if we would come down to 40,000. But what I'm saying is, if we did come to 41 or 40,000 US dollars, that's still perfectly natural and we could still be setting new all-time highs by next week, right? It's just normal price movement for Bitcoin. Uh, we also have to keep in mind what I said at the beginning of the video. We're still pretty overextended. This bull market is insanely bullish, technically and fundamentally, most importantly. More importantly than ever, it's incredibly fundamentally very strong. So I believe that's exactly why we're able to be so overextended and still people are expecting new all-time highs basically every other day. But at the same time, you have to realize where we are and pullbacks are not bad. Even in a bull market, you need pullbacks. So there's literally no excuse at this point. If you've been in the market for a fair amount of time, there's no excuse to get upset about what happened last night. Uh, and in fact, we could have dropped way lower last night and it still would have been perfectly normal. Again, if we start breaking below 40,000, let's say we break even the 21 day moving average, then then we can start wondering, okay, what's going on here? Are we are we actually entering more of a bullish, are we entering more of a bearish downturn You know, for a few weeks or something. 
But uh, as long as we're above this forty, forty-one thousand dollar level, there's literally no reason to be upset whatsoever about this. And as we saw over the last twenty-four hours, once those altcoins did take a pretty big dip, right? We saw that here again. Most of these charts, I can't even say it's a big dip because it really is not that big of a dip. But after those dips, what do we see? We just see massive wicks. Why? Because they got bought back up because the buying pressure is very high. So again. Uh, still very like no reason whatsoever to panic market looking very bullish and uh, specifically because so many people people were panicking about altcoins I want to just say here the altcoin market cap here um, It would still be okay if over the next few days if we did continue uh, And just try to find more support on this 21 day moving average as we come up here But ultimately again, I think the space is a little too bullish I don't think we'll even get that necessarily but I just want to calm anyone's nerves who are, are freaking out because um, we're in a very very good position we could drop uh, so much more and it would still be a very good position. So there's literally nothing to get upset about. We're still gonna be setting new all-time highs uh, in the very, very short term in my opinion. So again, drop or not, eh, things are looking very bullish. And as well guys, I just wanted to point this out and I, saw, I talked about fundamental news, JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley eyeing Bitcoin, uh, huge Wall Street names that are warming up the cryptocurrency. Again, flashback to 2017, this is uh, like planet girth. This is like, uh, this is a totally different world now than back in 2017. Nobody would have expected this back in 2017. JP Morgan co-president Daniel Pinto said on Friday, he's sure demand for Bitcoin will pick up to the extent that the Wall Street giant will have to be involved. Uh, basically what he said, if over time an asset class develops that is going to be used by different asset managers and investors, we will have to be involved. They don't want to miss out. The demand isn't there yet, but I'm sure it will be at some point. And that's the key there, guys. It happens extremely fast. And I would actually argue the demand is getting there very, very quickly. And the fact that they're already coming out and saying things like that, you know, I think we're in a very, very short time frame here before uh, that demand that isn't there they're talking about really starts to be apparent, right? It could be a matter of days as we've seen, okay? Things can pick up extremely fast. Companies with billions of dollars don't just wanna keep all of their reserves sitting in cash as they lose value year after year. Why not put it into something where they gain value like Bitcoin? Wow, so if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and as well, make sure to drop your comment below to enter for our hardware wallet, equivalent BTC, or access to T4. Um, for anybody interested in trading, make sure to take advantage of our Bybit and Femex deposit bonuses below, up to an additional $600 for trading currently using our link for Femex. Experienced traders only, and also if you want to support the channel, guys, never trade more than you're willing to lose.